What's up, everybody? Welcome to another book of Stefan podcast. I'm, of course, your host, Laura Stefan, King Stefan. And today the topic at hand is Kodal Nikki's dream. Now, who in the hell is Kodal Nikki? Josh Kodal Nikki, my linebacker coach at Truman State University at the time. I don't know where he's coaching right now. But anyway, at the time I was a linebacker at Truman State University, it was 2006, and he was the linebacker's coach and also the defensive coordinator. So, yes, today we're going to be discussing Kodal Nicky's dream. Why is that? Well, it's extraordinarily relevant, but also in the light of all the recent controversy at uh, football or controversy at football stadiums about young black men being slain and uh ne- you know respect for the military and and, and 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 nationalism and all this kind of stuff like this i think it's a great reflection that uh, americans are a bunch of losers and this is a bunch of insanity this is crazy like this is just basically um acts of rebellion at the at the football field that's what this is a manifestation of it's not anything progressive really um it's not anything i would say very powerful i say it's pretty weak uh in in comparison to the power of god available and 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 what god would would desired you know this is pretty pitiful resistance to Something that should have never existed. I mean, it should have been defeated when me, Colin Kaepernick, and everybody else that's probably playing football right now were teenagers. If God could have his way, but instead he have mercy on this worldwide rebellion that's going on at these football stadiums. And uh, here we are looking at this BS. But anyway, the whole point of this video is to point out how in fact, God is before everything. And just like U.S. officials have been working at conspiracies and scandals and hate at the football field uh, for many years, God has been working on uh, their demise, restoration, healing, and the spread of his kingdom at the same place. And Kodal Nikki's dream even predates my uh my commission to spread the gospel of islam to go and speak to ishmael because that didn't happen till 2007 so let's just go through all this for people who might not keep up with the book of Stephen, might not have watched all the videos read the book of Stephen. let me just go through it uh in 2007 god um commissioned me and told me to go and speak to him that's to go and speak to uh ishmael and uh deliver the gospel to him i will learn that it's according to abraham's desire it's nothing ambiguous in 2008 the word of the lord came to me saying that um <clears throat> that they have placed uh his watchmen in chains and it was only for his name his will and his word and uh as time would go on, I think a couple other parts that are relevant to this would manifest themselves. But let's just start from 2006 to 2008. So, in 2006, uh, Kodal Nikki's dream. Let's go through exactly what it was exactly. Okay. I'm going to a meeting in the morning to talk about, uh, to go over uh, some film review. I go down to the kennels at Truman State, which is right by the field, and I'm there to do a practice review from the earlier day, the the day before, excuse me, review the film, review uh, errors in practice and everything like that. And it's, I guess it's just me and Colton, because we all came at different times. Um, you could come at any time during the morning. Sometimes you'd be there with another linebacker, or sometimes you'd just be alone. And you review certain things and go over certain things and then go on about your day. So that's what I was there to do. But right when I walk in, Kodal Nicky has his, uh, he's kind of shaking up. And he tells me, uh, Hayden, you know, you're not, you're not, I don't know what you've been doing out here. Or if you're in any, any a- illegal activities, but whatever it is, it, uh, I hope it stops because uh, 
if it is something, you know, I had a dream that you were arrested on a football field. And, uh, co you know, I was like, well, no, I'm not up to any illegal activities or anything like that. But I definitely was somebody who was aware that, um, of spiritually aware, uh, that, um, knew that dreams could have great relevance. And I never forgot what he told me. Okay. Now in 2007, God commissions me to, tells me to go and speak to Ishmael. Okay. 2000, that, that's when I left Truman. I was at Mizzou because God told me to go to Mizzou. All right. And then in 2008, the word of the Lord comes to seven. They have placed my watchman in chains. That's me, of course. Uh, God uh, says that none of the Americans understand my revelation, his revelation, because they understand his. Uh, I asked, why do you allow uh, your... Um, Watchmen to suffer at the hands of this nation like this. Uh, and the conversation continues. If you like to read it, go go to bookofstephen.com and, and read these things. Okay. But anyway, um, I never put two and two together. Well, I don't think it's really two and two because it's quite ambiguous. But I never connected Cole Nikki's dream to uh, they have placed my watchmen in chains. But did you know I'm an interpreter of dreams? I forgot to tell you that. Or I, I maybe if you haven't watched any of the previous videos, that's what I am. People tell me their dreams and their visions, and I am able to interpret them and tell you what they mean through the power of God and the Holy Spirit, much like Joseph was an interpreter of dreams, except I'm a much greater interpreter of dreams and a much greater ruler than Joseph. Okay, um... That being said, <clears throat> I uh, some years later, God, uh, the Holy Spirit brought it to my understanding that Kodo Nikki's dream was, in fact, where his watchmen would be placed in chains. And so Kodo Nikki's dream was me, the watchman, being placed in chains for God's name, will and word. And mainly for the word concerning uh, the spread of the gospel to Ishmael, that is Muslims, Islam. Um, so, yes, before I ever got a mission, here is the plot to thwart that mission from the American authorities staring me in the face. And I did not even know it. Now, the big thing about all this is not to... Um, it doesn't matter that I'm knowledgeable that they're going to try and do this and accomplish it. What I wanted to point out with this is that the dreams of the righteous are indeed the destruction of the wicked. Okay. Now, Martin Luther King's dream seems all peachy keen and, and joyful and all that kind of stuff. It is, in fact, the destruction of all the wicked in the land. According to God's uh, the scriptures, I believe it's 37th Psalm, that the meek shall inherit the earth, but the wicked would no longer be found within it. Okay. Now, that dream is, is a destruction of the wicked. I'll discuss that at a later time. Right now, we're talking about Kodo Nikki's dream. Okay. Kodo Nikki's dream seems like a bad dream it seems like something negative okay but like martin luther king's dream kodal nikki's dream is um in fact the destruction of the wicked but in a more forward and direct way because i am one of god's two witnesses and according to the scriptures in revelations chapter 11 all of uh, my enemies, anyone who wants to harm me, must die, okay? That's real. The FBI here, that's who that is trying to place me in chains in this vision. They are violating God's judgment, okay? So they're condemned by it, all right? That's the destruction of the Federal Bureau of Investigation, okay? If we remember... Federal Bureau of Investigation basically killed more. They killed Martin Luther King Jr. and then spread lies about him. Um, talking about he was 
fucking hoes before the uh with the mountaintop speech, all kinds of terrible stuff. He was a womanizer, all this crazy shit, you know. Um, but anyways, the FBI, while there was hope, even though Martin Luther King's dream is indeed the destruction of the wicked, because of the blood of um, Martin Luther King shed in Christ, it actually was some hope in there for even them that they might turn away from their sins and have salvation. On the other hand, Stefan's dream is as the, the fucking demise of the FBI. There's really not much hope at all. As a matter of fact, um, when oh, let's let's look at God's word here. I I said for you to read it yourself, but this is why it's hopeless. Okay, um, and I said. To the Lord, here's what I said, and they have placed my watchmen in chains. Why do you allow your watchmen to suffer at the hands of these hateful and rebellious people? And the Lord said to me, my watchmen and his brother's sufferings will cry out and demand redemption and restoration. What Americans mean for evil, I will use for good. The watchmen you will see will prosper even in the midst of hatred from America and his brothers. Now. Okay, redemption in this case would mean revenge for the iniquity against me. All right, restoration would be the restoration of the people that I guess will be available, but they really won't have a part in. You know, there's only a sliver of hope in this, but just because of the exceptional nature of the judgment over my head. And so there, while there was much hope in Martin Luther King's dream for the wicked, there is almost none. There is a little sliver. I mean, maybe it, when these people seeing I see this video, they should know to take off their uniforms, quit their jobs, so they're not struck down with the wicked at the time of judgment because there will be a complete destruction of the Federal Bureau of Investigation by a fire coming out of my mouth. All the tens of thousands of them struck down in the streets, openly before the eyes of the nations. So what we have here is that although um, although my sufferings will count to, I guess, earn restoration of the things that I need restored, and that guy was going to restore anyway, uh, they will also count to destroy my enemies, which is wonderful. That's exactly how it should be. So, Koto Nikki's dream is hopelessness for the wicked. Before, now let's think about the actions of the wicked kind of chronologically. I don't believe paid patriotism existed at the football stadium until 2008, which is after the year I stopped playing, okay? I didn't even see this while I was playing. But anyway, 2008, paid patriotism begins, um... To, to do what, 2014 or 15, or was it 16, Colin Kaepernick uh, takes a, a knee, national anthems, um, do, 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 controversy, military people supposedly mad, all this kind of bullshit like this, uh, Trayvon Martin, Mike Brown, Cole Nicky's dream is way before them, um, yeah, like, yeah, Cody Nikki's dream predates the black male slain um, that caused controversy at the football field or the feeding place. And also, it predates even paid patriotism, which is the attempt to start war against Muslims, okay? So, basically, God's plan and what God is doing predates everything even my knowledge of what he wanted me to do you know so Colton Nikki's dream is quite exceptional as it predates everything okay now is Colton Nikki a saint no but I guess he'll he'll live that's what I don't think many of my coaches will but he has a vision he, uh, God said in the last days he'll pour out his spirit on all men and they will dream dreams and see visions Kodanicki saw a vision, you know, um, so he'll live. 
And uh, I guess that counts as righteousness. I thought he was a bit of a dickhead. Um, why should I tell you? Well, I'll tell you why. <laughs> when I was at Truman, I had some uh, problems with my housing or whatever. Something wasn't paid in my account. And I had to pay it up before. So my stuff was in the hallway. And I didn't have a place to live for about, it was a couple hours or whatever. But anyways, I'm trying to settle all that. I'm waiting for a phone call from the housing people. I get it during the meeting. And I have to leave the meeting and go and get my stuff and put it in the room. You know, I can't leave it in the hallway or whatever. Because I didn't have a dorm for like a, like eight to ten hours or something like that. So my stuff is just laying in the hallway waiting to be placed. I had to go and make sure that stuff was put up so it didn't get stolen. And Cold Nicky, uh, when I come back, he's like screaming and hollering at me, talking about my cell phone went off during the meeting. And I'm like, bitch, you know, like my stuff, I didn't have a place to live. I had to go settle that. And uh, we got into it over that phone call, man. And um, I was pissed. He tried to make me do a punishment for my phone going off in the meeting. This is a real dickhead move, ain't it? But anyway, Cold Nicky had a dream, so... I guess that counts as righteousness, you know. So, yeah, I wasn't very pleased with Cold Nicky over that shit, man. And I'm still not. That being said, I guess this is his salvation. He had a dream that um, ended up being the ruin of one of the most terrible organizations on the earth. So, God chooses the foolish things to shame the wise. Because I don't think Cold Nicky is Saint Cold Nicky, but... Whatever. Is he saying Cold Nicky now? Maybe he will be. I don't know. Anyway, um, yes, the dreams of the righteous, they may seem like hope for everyone. They are, in fact, at the end of the day, the condemnation of the wicked uh, because the things not seen or seen within them definitely condemn the wicked and um, and ensure their destruction. In the case of Martin Luther King's dream, it's the things not seen. That's the condemnation of the wicked. In the case of Kodal Nicky's dreams, it's the things seen, which clearly condemn those working against Stefan at the football field of being wicked and uh, being surely destroyed. And so, yes, um, the, the sufferings that I suffer are at the football field are in fact the condemnation and the 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 uh what would you say not justification let's say the in, the the clear point identifier that who my enemies are and that they are in fact trying to harm me and so that's the end of the FBI and their conspiracy against Stefan Kodal Nikki's dream before Stefan ever got a mission that the FBI attacked him for and before the FBI ever attacked Stefan because the book of Stefan wasn't even written yet. So God was way before my enemies and had them all struck down a long time ago. They were finished. The end for them. Okay. Praise God. That's, uh, man, I thought I would talk a lot more. Oh, yeah. I mentioned at the beginning of this podcast that the NFL players and, and, and owners and everybody over there was a bunch of fucking losers. Yes, this is sad. Why is it that God is working through Stefan so powerfully, but not through any of these players or owners so powerfully at all? I mean, the things that they do are disastrous. It's disastrous. Like they're participating in they 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 have allowed an attempt by the US military to dupe children into getting excited about u.s nationalism serving the national organization and going and destroying tens of millions of well 1.5 billion innocent people in, within the muslim civilization that's what they're allowing to work against them with very little resistance the only resistance is the slaying of young black men which they are so it's kind of like default but they weren't even, black men weren't even in solidarity about that. Or even, there wasn't any, anybody even paying attention to it. You know, so pitiful. That's sad. Like, oh man. The, the, these grown men, they just, I got it. Why is, why is God working so powerfully at a football field? 
But his power isn't really ever, or light isn't evident in any of the players so much. I see it in Colin Kaepernick, you know. But uh, even that light is not bright enough because I think if he would operate more in the truth, if he was actually really outside of being, let's say, he's a friend of the, we can see he's a friend of the shepherd. You know, he's against the slaying of the young black male. He's a friend of the sheep. His mu girlfriend is a Muslim. But is he a friend of Jesus? You know, because the truth of that would defeat this. And this is a, de America is a defeated enemy. Okay, they, they've been finished. They've been done. And these motherfuckers still are letting these this dead thing beat up on them. Like, that's powerless. That's pitiful. Um, That's something that I, I believe on Instagram, the post identified it as some weak-ass shit. It is weak-ass shit. If God's desire is that this was defeated a long time ago, you know, even though people would pull off some of it, this stuff with Colin Kaepernick is ridiculous. Like, this is... Those the, the 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 black men on the field are extraordinarily rebellious. You know, I think they'll live because the way they've been poisoned and rejected and attacked. But that's it. I mean, this isn't like a, a conscious effort of theirs. You know. So yeah, that's isn't that weird? How God is working so powerful was working so powerfully at a football field around me, but. Who are my peers? Nobody, really. So, yeah, that's very pitiful. The NFL, the kingdom of heaven is like the little children. And uh, the NFL players and owners don't value the, the the children. And they don't have faith like them. And so, I guess, you know, this is ne it was never meant to be done amongst grown men. Anyway, it's meant to be done amongst kids. It got the latest judgment, I guess, for the sake of the world. But, um... Yeah, that is bizarre. I think that's very bizarre. I think it's strange. I don't like the sight of it. It's a strange place in rebellion. Um, I guess the only real purpose it has is to separate the players from the nation so they're not destroyed with it. But let me touch on one last thing before I, I get up out of here. Um the the players are in fact i was saying oh yeah i wanted to point something out now i told you that god told me that uh, he would destroy all of america's armies and navies okay in prior podcasts all right americans resistance to the uh the the actions of colin kaepernick are essentially poison to their own young men and children. They're crazy. So, Colin Kaepernick takes knee in order to bring or will not stand for national anthem because what white people have done to young black men across the nation and what that flag really stands for and has always stood for. <clears throat> in fact, what the owners and are trying to do is to suck American children, mostly white children, because that's mostly who's in the military, into military service through blowing up a football stadium and then having these this pomp and circumstance at the stadium. OK, the fact that white people that Colin Kaepernick was their last hope. I mean, hope has passed them by the fact that they attack Colin Kaepernick and was against him if they would have respected the 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 the, the pointing out the non-violent peaceful pointing out of the brutality of their sins and slaying young black men across the nation they would in fact prevent the delusional downfall of of the slaying of their soldier by by God's God's word and essentially the slaying of their young people. So basically, the neglect of young black children, only a few of them. Let's think like Trayvon Martin, Mike Brown. It's like a few black kids that are being killed by police uh, and black men. Not many. But America's soldiers will die by the tens of millions. And everybody that they gather up, all the armies and navies from around the world, they will be destroyed by the tens of millions. That's way worse. And so 
their delusional hatred has thrust them into a greater travesty than what the slaying of these few young black males in America is. And so at the end of the day, the demise of the wicked is much worse than the sufferings of the few righteous black men that uh, have been dying in the streets lately. Isn't that something? So the dumbasses are way past salvation. I mean, way, way, way the fuck past salvation. They across the street around the fucking corner, jump on the highway, go to the airport, fly to China, take a boat to Australia, take another plane trip to the United Kingdom. I don't know. They way the fuck out there. And then take a spaceship to Mars, you know. And here is a chance for them to have salvation. Colin Kaepernick is a chance for them to turn away from their sins. And they want to kill Colin Kaepernick. And it leads to the destruction of their own young people. Because all the NFL owners that they have sided with are trying to do is suck their children into um, voluntarily, you know, giving their lives to destroy the Muslim civilization. There you have it, people. When people do wrong, you know, at the end of the day, when they look back at their demise, all they can do is look at themselves because it wasn't God. God is definitely good and uh, he definitely is patient and attempting that all men turn away from their sins before it's too late. And this is definitely a bizarre delay in judgment. Nonetheless, there was Colin Kaepernick was some hope for their asses, but there was. And I don't even know. I, I Sometimes I look at Colin Kaepernick's actions, you know, it's full of light. But man, why isn't he full of more of the truth? I just don't like what I see. Like America in all cases is hard hearted and rebellious. If they weren't, they would take a stand against this militarism because it is disastrous. It is the destruction of a good clip of a certain generation of their young people and eventually theirs too. So that does it for this Book of Stephen podcast. Um, Cold of Nikki's Dream, man. Very relevant before the plots of the wicked. God was plotting at the football stadium too to destroy them. And that's something God is before everything, guys. Uh, that's been another Book of Stephen podcast. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Peace out.